My 15-year-old daughter lost her life to suicide. She had been struggling with anxiety and depression. She and our family participated in professional psychotherapy. I tried my best to help her feel accepted, that she belonged, that she was seen. And one night, we had an argument, and she told me she needed time alone. And 31 minutes later, my world was shattered. My daughter was gone, and I couldn't bring her back. Anger, guilt, and grief consumed me for years. My therapist eventually recommended I try a mental health program incorporating horses. When I arrived at the ranch, the treatment team invited me to interact with the horses. Standing at the edge of the pasture was a tall, brown horse named Rebel. Unlike the other horses, Rebel always kept his distance from me. Each session, I tried to approach Rebel, but as I got closer, Rebel would step back, never allowing me to be close enough to touch him. On one particularly difficult day, I was walking around the pasture in extreme grief, longing to see my daughter again. I looked up across the field and saw Rebel, reminding me of the physical and emotional distance between my daughter and I, now and when she was alive. Overcome by emotion, I curled up on the ground and sobbed uncontrollably. Some moments passed when, surprisingly, Rebel was standing above me. He pressed his head against my side and kept it there for a long time until my cries began to lessen. I looked up at Rebel and said, You haven't left me. You're still here. That was the first time, after years, I felt peace. I felt that Rebel was seeing me, forgiving me, that my daughter was forgiving me, that I could forgive myself. Rebel continues to teach me that I can release the anger and pain and still keep my daughter's memory near. When I met Magic, I never could have imagined the things that we would see together. The awards she would win, the, the lives that she would touch, um, that people would know about her all over the world. And here she is, just a little horse, and she's my best friend. Because of magic, I have been on the scene of great challenges across this country and witnessed great love. In the worst of times, magic and I have seen the best in people. I have watched magic touch thousands of lives through the years. and she has touched my life the most of all.
The first time most of the Sandy Hook families saw each other after the tragedy was with magic. We were asked to come to the Newtown Public Library. We were told there would probably only be one or two children, so we only brought one horse and that was magic. When we arrived at the library, there were 600 people waiting. And Magic made sure that everyone who wanted a hug got a hug. Magic was also visiting officers in the interrogation room at the Newtown Police Department. There was one officer spending a lot of time with Magic. She was down on one knee and turned to me and said, Is it okay to give a hug? I thought she meant she wanted to give Magic a hug. Then she stood up and gave me a hug, and I was a little surprised. I realized how much it meant to her to have a little horse in the police station on such a difficult day. Here we were, two strangers who had never met before. The magic of magic is she brings people together. We had been asked to travel to Moore, Oklahoma to comfort children who had been trapped in their elementary schools by a massive tornado. We were reading a story about Magic, who loves children who are happy and who are sad. One little boy raised his hand and said, I am very sad. And then his teacher said, I am very sad too. The children and the teachers had lost their homes, their school, friends, and loved ones. And I think the teacher was first in line for a magic hug. We didn't know at the time, but everyone there was about to be hit by a second tornado, the biggest in U.S. history. We had to outrun the tornado in our van with the therapy horses. It was like a freight train behind us. There was debris and a car flipped behind us. I wasn't sure if we were going to get away from this one. We looked in the camera with everything happening and going on around us, and the horses were casually eating. They knew that they were going to be taken care of. When we were finally able to return, we came to our hotel, and it was destroyed. This was the hotel where everyone told us to take shelter. The weatherman later told us we had made the right decision and got out as fast as we could. You just never know when you give someone a hug What's going to happen next? Magic and I also went to Charleston, South Carolina after the tragedy at the AME Church. We met with hundreds of people, but there is one woman that I will always remember. There was a little elderly woman at one of the funerals, and she was wearing a big black hat. She knelt down so she could see Magic face to face. She was down on her knees and she looked up to me and said, you should be out there where all the cameras are. I looked at her and said, we didn't come for the cameras, we came for you. She said, you came for me? And she started crying. She gave Magic a long hug, then let me help her up and we waved goodbye. In the worst of times, we have seen the very best in people. At the medical examiner's office, after the Pulse nightclub tragedy in Orlando, Florida, after the fires in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, the condo collapse in Surfside, Florida, the aftermath of hurricanes. In every one of those stories, we have seen hundreds of acts of kindness all around us. Magic's real magic is bringing some of those people together. My name is Elizabeth Mann, and I am a geriatrics and palliative care physician. I met Magic when I was doing a palliative care fellowship in New York City. I had a patient named Terry who was very sick. She was suffering a lot, uh, both with symptoms that were uncontrolled, but I think also with loneliness. She didn't have a lot of friends or family. And I spent a lot of time talking to her about the things that she used to like to do. And she told me that when she was younger, she would go to a riding stable right near Central Park and she would help take care of the horses and go riding in Central Park. And I felt like 
From a medical perspective, there was only so much I was going to be able to help her, but I wanted to help her have one more really good day. And I just started Googling therapeutic horse programs and I found Gentle Carousel and sent an email. I didn't expect an email back, but the next day I had an email saying, sure, we'll come to the hospital, just let us know when. So I talked to hospital leadership. They were a little bit hesitant at first. They'd never had a horse in the hospital. Magic and I happened to be in New York City visiting hospitals and teaching a class at Columbia Medical School. And Jorge called me. He said, we're on the George Washington Bridge. We're coming. And um, it was a little exciting trying to get Magic there, but I'm glad the hospital finally agreed to it. Because of New York City parking, Magic had to walk through Times Square in order to get to Mount Sinai Hospital to see Terry. When Magic walked into the hospital doors, there was all this media that we weren't expecting. There were staff and doctors and administrators in suits. It was really cool for everyone that day having Magic there. The staff were so excited and all crowded around when they came in the door. They were all packed around Magic and even riding up the elevator with her to get to the ICU. And then Terry just lit up. It really, it definitely made her day and that made me really happy to see. She spent a lot of time just with Magic, smiling, um, ear rubbing. And Terry died just a few days after that. I'm so happy that she was able to experience Magic's visit and that Gentle Carousel was willing to come. And it's been a really good memory for me to look back on and has helped me understand how much we can help people with sm small interventions that aren't necessarily medicines or inter, you know, medical procedures, but things that just make somebody happy can really make a big difference for our patients. I remember the first time I ever met Magic. I was in this position for just one week and families kept telling me, and my team kept telling me, you have to meet Magic, you have to meet these miniature horses. And, and I love animals, but I never really thought much about it until Magic comes up the front of our house and is wearing all of this glitter, and she got all dressed up just to meet me as the new executive director. And so I knelt down, and Magic nestles her neck, her head right in my neck. Oh my God, it was the most truly, no pun intended, magical thing I have literally ever experienced. And so I have this incredibly great bond with Magic and every one of the miniature horses that come and create a sense of normalcy. And so we're so fortunate to have the gentle carousel horses come every single week so a family can um, have that joy have that hope because these horses are so intuitive and they just create that one moment of joy that you might need as a mom who's made decisions all day about the life of your child, for a dad who might be really stressed out because he's away from his house and away from his normal environment, and for all those healthy siblings that we have who take their lives and put them on hold to be with their brother or sister who is here in our hospital. So the Gentle Carousel Miniature Horses provide love and joy and hope and just this sense of complete and utter normalcy. And we are so fortunate to have had this partnership for 17 years. My father went to Colegio Belén, a Jesuit school in Havana with Fidel Castro. My family, including my aunt and uncle and my cousins, moved to Gainesville, Florida, where my dad was a civil engineer and my uncle was a neurosurgeon at the University of Florida Shands Hospital. When I was five years old, I became an American citizen.
Growing up in the neighborhood was a lot of fun. We rode our bikes around everywhere, played sports, and we were outside all the time, sometimes getting into trouble, kind of like the little rascals. We're still friends to this day. One day I was riding my bike home with all my friends from a Little League baseball game and I was hit by a car. The last thing I remember is leaving the Little League baseball park on bicycles with all the kids. The next thing I know, I woke up in the emergency room at the hospital. From what I was told by my friends, it was pretty bad. There were a bunch of kids around just trying to figure out what to do. One of the boys ran into a house to call an ambulance. There were no adults around to take care of the situation. Coming from a neighborhood where we were always playing and having fun to uh, being in a hospital room all by myself, it was, it was pretty lonely. The report I received about my injuries were that I had received serious head trauma. My skull was cracked and essentially my eyebrow was pushed in and my eye socket, the orbital area there, had been kind of crushed and my nose was broken. So they had to do some reconstructive surgery. It took about three days for my swelling to go down. I had some brain swelling and they had to assess exactly what they needed to do. What I do remember is nurses coming in and drawing blood, giving me shots. They always had to monitor how I was doing, taking blood pressure. So I couldn't really sleep. Being in the hospital during this time was pretty depressing day after day just uh, spending a lot of time by myself. Uh, my dad was still working and my mom had to take care of the other kids. There were four siblings and a younger brother that she had to mind. And so I spent a lot of time just sitting in a, a stark room, no television. I couldn't read books because of the, the head trauma. It was a tough time. Magic and I spend a lot of time in hospitals. It's hard for me to believe after all these years of avoiding hospitals, I'm back in the hospital bringing magic to other children. I had the opportunity to watch how magic interacted with these kids and how she just stepped up and she seemed to engage with them and just really made me laugh and made me feel good that uh, I could bring this into a child's room who's going through a very, very difficult time. Coming into the hospital with magic and knowing these kids were probably feeling a lot of the same thing that I felt, being very scared, being very lonely, um, and then to have a little horse walk into their room and visit with them, spend time with them. I just saw it on their faces. They were smiling, they were laughing. So excited to have a visitor like this on four legs, little magic. What some hospitals are doing now makes a big difference allowing siblings and friends to come in and visit, and allowing a little horse to walk in and spend time with the child. I would have liked to have had a little horse walk into my hospital room. Magic was sworn in by the Chief of Police at the Ocala Police Department and is officially Officer Magic. Magic and I have worked with first responders for many years in challenging situations. She has worked with children who have lost parents in the line of duty and even attended Police Week in Washington, D.C. Magic works around sirens, flashing lights, police motorcycles, helicopters, and much larger police horses.
Officer Magic helps with positive outreach programs, including joining officers reading the book, Officer Magic is My Friend, to children in schools and at-risk programs. Gentle Carousel Miniature Therapy Horses has provided literacy programs for children for over 25 years. Magic has been featured in many books by different authors and publishers. She reads with children in schools and libraries and even hoofographs books. Magic meets thousands of young friends each year. Children Magic Can't Hug in Person can learn about her from books and on television and radio programs. Magic has patiently taken thousands of photos in her life and been filmed at many news stations. Many news crews have put their cameras down for a magic hug. She also does FaceTime calls with young patients. There's a pony on the phone for you. Everyone wants a magic photo. Magic lives on a farm with her lifelong herd of horse friends. She loves me, but also needs her equine companions. Our individual therapy horses, including Magic, work no more than two days a week and have a lot of time to just be horses. When Magic walks off her van, she never knows what she's going to do or what she's going to see. Is it New York City or the country? The Capitol or a stage in Nashville? An intensive care unit or a television studio in a high-rise building? People say Magic is fearless, but really she trusts that I will always keep her safe. Magic has seen places most horses will never see. and she is really curious about everything.
Magic is always ready to try anything. Magic has therapy horse friends she has known for many years. She also helps mentor younger therapy horses. They're just not allowed to pass her when they're out running together. Magic has received many honors that I will always treasure. She recently had a flag flown over the U.S. Capitol in her honor for her years of service to the United States. But the real honor has been the amazing people we have met together through the years. Like getting to know Harry, the owner of the famous show horse, Snowman. Magic and Snowman were both inducted into the U.S. Equestrian Equus Foundation Hall of Fame the same year. Magic attended the gala, and Harry said Magic was his new favorite horse. You have to love that. Even though Magic and I visit a lot of children, we visit thousands of adults as well because we're all kids at heart. Does Magic come home with lipstick spots on her nose? Sometimes she does. I've witnessed wonderful moments and even some miracles working with Magic. A woman who spoke for the first time in years when Magic came into her room. A patient who woke from a coma with Magic at his bedside. Watching all the hugs and kisses Magic receives from adults and children facing challenges. All the comfort a little horse brings. Magic has worked with thousands of veterans across the country and with Gold Star families. 
When I think of veterans, I always think of Magic's special friend Don, a 99-year-old World War II veteran. Don is a singer and has always wanted to be a movie star. He met Magic when she was visiting his assisted living program. Hey, folks out of Dumbwork, I come from the Ain't Had Any Larnin'. Still are happy as can be, I'm doing what comes naturally. Ba-dum, ba-da-bum, ba-da-bum, bum, 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 Hey, this is a nice little horse. Magic, you are a good little guy. She turns her head so she can listen. She wants to hear your song. She likes them singing. Don now has many fans. He has joined Magic at some of her events, and he has become a movie star. Don was able to join Magic at the premiere of this film with his family and friends. He walked the red carpet and the audience sang happy birthday to him as he sat in the front row of the theater. It's never too late to dream a dream or to have that dream come true. Magic plans to attend Don's 100th birthday party. You know, one thing I've learned from Magic is something bad doesn't have to happen to express your love for somebody. Every day is a new day. You can give somebody a hug. You can tell them how much you love them. Even somebody you don't know, just give them a smile and tell them how much you appreciate them. You know, we've seen a lot of things and it's just amazing uh, what just being next to somebody means to them. Even a stranger, they appreciate your unconditional love. They appreciate you being there, giving them a smile. You know what we always say is that in the worst of times, we see the best in people. How about we see the best in people every day? Be like magic. If a little horse can do it, you can do it. Before you leave today, give somebody a hug.
little hero horse, before you have to go. Let me whisper in your ear something you should know. My hero, can we play? Everything will be okay. Can you jump into my dreams and save the day? Little hero horse, I'm over here. Little hero horse, I love you, dear. Little hero horse, can we play? Little hero horse, you save the day.